Hello, I'm Jill Stocks and I'm one of the authors of this paper about potentially hazardous prescribing in the UK general practice. Prescribing is very common uh, in general practice and around a billion prescriptions per year are dispensed in the community. And around 1 in 20 prescriptions has been shown to be associated with a clinically important error. So following on from this, we decided that we'd look at the question, what is the prevalence of different types of potentially hazardous prescribing and how much does this vary between practices? Well, in a nutshell, our answer was that some types of potentially hazardous prescribing were common and the variation in prevalence between practices was quite high, even after we adjusted for factors related to the patients and the practices. Here are some prescribing safety indicators that we analysed. You will need to pause the video to look at these in detail. But just briefly, we looked at the prescribing of antiplatelets, anticoagulants, beta blockers, metformin, digoxin, and to patients with contraindicating diagnoses or prescriptions. To do this, we use the clinical practice research data link. We analysed anonymised records from 526 practices, which were attended by almost 5 million patients. And of those patients, almost a million were at risk of potentially hazardous prescribing because of prescriptions they were already receiving or diagnoses uh, that they already had, i.e. they formed the denominator. The study design was cross-sectional as of April 2013. And besides measuring the prevalence of the prescribing prescribing safety indicators, we also quantified the variability between practices using a, a logistic regression model and we identified which factors were important in predicting which patients and practices were more likely to have a hazardous prescription issued using the same model. This is a summary of some results for individual prescribing indicators. Again, you'll need to pause the video if you want to look at these in detail. The blue bars show the intra-class correlation coefficient. Now this is a statistical measure of the variation between practices. So if you look at the uh, bar for warfarin and NSAID, you'll see that this is quite a lot larger than the bar for warfarin and aspirin. So what this means is that practices are much more variable in the uh, co-prescription of warfarin and NSAID than warfarin and aspirin. Now the ICC is a statistical concept and it's not easy to uh, imagine what that, this might mean for the prevalence within an individual practice. So I'm going to show you one example for one prescribed safety indicator and this is for patients with a history of peptic ulceration who've been prescribed an NSAID. You'll see that the intracluster correlation coefficient is 0 0.06 yet Half the practices had zero prevalence for this type of potentially hazardous prescribing and in some practices almost 30% of patients with a peptic ulcer were prescribed and then said. So our key findings were that around 5% of patients at risk of potentially hazardous prescribing did in fact receive the hazardous prescription. There was high variation in the prevalence of potentially hazardous prescribing between practices, which points to some important ways and targets for improving patient safety. And older patients and those receiving multiple medications were more likely to receive a hazardous prescription. Of course, we need to have some caution when we're comparing practices in this way. Prescribing safety indicators can occur for clinical reasons and are not always an oversight or error. Indeed, this is why we call them potentially hazardous prescriptions, because they may sometimes be the best option for an individual patient. Prescribing tends to be an individual rather than a practice responsibility, and sometimes prescriptions are initiated in secondary care, and the GP may be uh, acting upon the request of a consultant. And finally, we need more work to identify which indicators pose the most risk to the patient. So I'd like to thank you for listening and viewing this uh, video abstract and I hope you found it interesting.